It is, in fact, the unique whip-like tail of this shark that has anglers and scientists concerned. Researchers from NOAA and the Flager Institute of Environmental Research head out for the day to continue their research, looking at how these sharks are hooked and released as one of the keys to the long-term conservation of the common thresher. A crew of five aboard two research boats begins trolling for threshers in the near shore waters off Southern California, which is a well-known pupping and nursery area for this unique species. The thresher shark family is very unique in that they have this elongate caudal fin lobe which they use to stun small prey items which they come back and subsequently forage on with their small subterminal mouth. Commercial fishing for thresher sharks is strictly regulated, but over the past six years the species has been rising in popularity with recreational anglers. It's, it's a great opportunity for boaters to, to go a few miles from the harbor and really experience a, a big game fish. Right now, the thresher population is sustainable, and scientists consider this to be the best time to look at impacts of threshers caught and released. The way that traditionally anglers fish, is they troll for these sharks. When the shark uses its tail to strike the bait, it becomes hooked in the caudal fin and subsequently hauled in backwards. Like most pelagic sharks, the thresher shark is obligate ram ventilator, which means it needs to swim forward, passing oxygen and water over the gills in order to breathe. It's almost a foul hooking type of fishery, and so these animals are put under a lot of stress and strain as they reel them to the boat in backwards or in reverse, if you will. And so that we estimate prior to this research that there could be a significant mortality rate with that type of fishing. And so our research was launched to look into what actually is that survivorship rate or that mortality rate. A large heavy lure baited with two large J-hooks can be trolled around the nearshore areas and deep canyons here in Southern California. When the animal is captured, we fight it in the same standard method and way that's being fought by anglers here. The shark is then measured and tagged with a satellite transmitter. The transmitter provides data on whether or not the shark will survive the angling event. You know, the, the data has given us some indications of uh, the level of stress put on these animals uh, by these techniques. Our research shows that if the fight time exceeds 85 minutes, that 100% of the animals that we fought longer than 85 minutes and tagged died. So one of the recommendations that we're giving back to anglers and trying to educate through the different outreach venues is use the right gear, try to minimize the fight time, and release these animals the quicker the better if you can. Using circle hooks instead of J-hooks is another part of the study. Circle hooks are less likely to get caught in the tail. The animals seem to be in a lot better condition, so we're confident when we complete the research that that will show that technique to be a, a much a healthier manner in which to catch and release these sharks. Improvement of gear and making recommendations for best fishing practices are steps towards increasing survival rates for released threshers. One of the goals of the project is to have a sustainable fishery both in the commercial and the recreational side and I think the anglers that we've talked to and we've worked with, they want that goal as well. Like I say, it's, it, it seems to be at a population level where if we do things right we can have this fishery year after year and provide good uh, sport as well as table fare in a sustainable manner.